coming up with bullshit reasons as to why. It's both a bit scary, but it's also a huge opportunity, because you might be able to solve problems simply by suddenly going, maybe what these people are saying isn't true. Now, I'll give you, there's a researcher, he would, actually, he would love to come and speak, Tim Reed, Tim Reed Associates. He's been a researcher for pretty much 40 years. Brilliant market researcher, but about 15 years ago, he became a convert to kind of evolutionary and behavioral science. And I said, well, ha, 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 how do you do market research? Now you know they're just bullshitting. And he said, only one thing changes, he said. What they're saying is irrelevant, but the fact that they're saying it is important. So, for example, he was doing research in a leading high school. This is called, by the way, a really interesting thing, emotional misattribution, which is we, have a, we, we feel in a particular mood and we misplace the reason for our mood. So you get a lot of bad restaurant reviews on TripAdvisor, which start with a sentence, I had booked a table for my mother-in-law's birthday. Okay? <laughs> and it wasn't really that the restaurant was all that bad. Okay, the guy wanted to stay at home watching Champions League and necking back Kansas Stella. Suddenly he's told by his wife, no, it's mum's birthday, we've got to take out for dinner. That means you've got to go to a much posher restaurant than he'd choose to go to. He misses, you know, Borussia Dortmund versus um, you know, Galatasaray or something. Okay, and because it's her birthday, he's going to have to pay. By this stage, he's pretty pissed. <laughs> then he has difficulty parking. So he gets to the restaurant, he's sitting in the restaurant, he's in a foul mood. And he will look around, basically, for spurious reasons to justify his move. So he'll go, the service was rubbish, or the staff are too uh, patronising, or whatever. And it's a really, really interesting thing, because there's a wonderful experiment. The, um, it's actually called the um, uh, Capilano Bridge Experiment, where they got a really attractive woman to do spurious market research and ask people questions at the end of a really rickety bridge across a canyon near Vancouver. Has anybody been to Vancouver? You might have been across it. It's a very high, rickety, wobbly pedestrian bridge, about 300 feet, 400 feet in there. Scary. And then she'd ask them a load of questions, and then just say, thanks, here's my card with a phone number on, if you've got any further questions. And um, then she did the same thing at a boring bridge, which is about 10 feet above the water, with exactly the same demographic, asking males spurious questions. Uh, that was about half a mile downstream. The number of phone calls she got trying to chat her up and ask her out was three and a half times greater after the Rickety Bridge than it was after the Boring Bridge. Because people had an elevated heart rate, adrenaline pumping, and in a weird kind of way, they couldn't distinguish bridge fear from sexual attraction. You know I mean? <laughs> that kind of way, when you take your girlfriend on a roller coaster, okay, or when you take your girlfriend to go and see Saw 4, you big softy romantic you, okay? You're kind of hacking your girlfriend, right? Because you're creating in her the kind of emotional reaction which you hope she will mistake for sex of the But emotional misattribution, now what's so interesting about emotional misattribution, he's doing research, this guy, for a, what he calls, you know, researchers, they will say a leading UK bookshop chain. Now, I'm purely guessing here, I think he's Waterstones, right? And he was researching um, sort of C2DE book buyers who don't mind buy many books at Waterstones, and they buy like one or two a year, and like one of them is like the biography of a footballer, or something like that, okay? And then one of them is Fifty Shades of Grey. You know, they're really mainstream book buyers, and they're in Waterstones. Don't get Fifty Shades of Grey, by the way. If any, anybody here wants to be really badly treated by a really rich man, you can just get a job at WPP. But anyway. <laughs> um, <laughs> anyway. Um, the, um, but the point is that all these people kept saying, I don't like Waterstones because the staff are rude. <laughs> okay, I, they're really rude. I just find the staff really rude. Now, if you're, not, if you're not very confident with weird restaurants, okay, and you don't know which knife to use, and they think stupid things like finger bowls and weird fancy things like fish knives, it's quite easy. You don't say, I feel socially awkward in this restaurant. You go, the staff are patronising me. Have you ever had that thing where somebody in a posh restaurant actually gets really angry with the staff, and it's actually a way of offloading discomfort onto somebody else? And he said, 
Yeah, that seems a bit strange. So he said, you know, I, I, he said, you know, Waterton's isn't perfect, but I've never been to Waterton's and someone go, fuck off, we don't want you all sorted here, get out of here, you're barred, right? I've never had it. So he goes, this is really weird. So he asked the people, you know, can you give an example of where the staff are rude? And they just say things like, well, they just are. They don't give any concrete examples of rudeness. And his point is that, now, what this is, is they're not really saying, they are saying the staff are rude. What they really are feeling is, I'm feeling patronised here because I don't know what autobiography <coughs> means. I'm in this shop with a load of highfalutin books and hoity-toity English students, okay? And I'm feeling patronised. So, if you took what they said literally, you'd invest hugely in staff training to make them more polite. If you actually looked at the deeper interpretation of their emotional state, then now you've got real creative opportunities. What can you do to make infrequent book buyers? Now, it may be, I would argue, most of the frequent book buyers, mostly by books in the run-up to Christmas. Okay? Very, very seasonal book buying. And what you might say is basically you need a different Waterstones or the, you know, maybe not the shop window, but a section of Waterstones uh, you know, in November, December, needs to be much more punter-friendly, to put it crudely, than it is in, in February or March. Now, that would be the kind of recommendation, you know, uh, you know you, instead of putting, you know, you know, a masterly autobiography which uh, uh, captures the anguish of living in an Amish community in 19th century, whatever, you'd say, great presence, right? Okay? You know what I mean? And so, and what I find so interesting about that is, we can, once we start, I, I think we can solve problems like redistribution of wealth, I think we can solve problems like racism, actually. I, I really mean this, by stopping listening to what people say and go, what's actually behind this? Um, you know, what, what's actually going on here deep down? Um, one of the things, if you talk to people about paying tax, um, one of the interesting things about that is they, you know, a lot of right-wing people get really, really angry about it because they oh, it's taking money from people who deserve it, it's just giving it to it. Strangely, the same right-wing people are weirdly cool. My grandfather was a doctor in South Wales in the Welsh mining town. And he always believed in a, a guaranteed basic income, where everybody is given a living wage to start with. Okay? Then you earn extra money, which you don't pay much tax on. Then when you get to a sort of level of prosperity, you pay a bit more tax to counterbalance the, the five grand you get automatically, or whatever it is, and then it tails off again, or whatever. Okay? Quite a lot of really right-wing people actually are okay with that. Now why? Because it's still redistributing wealth, right? And the reason is there are two things about the guaranteed basic income which probably appeal to the lizard brain uh, in, in humans. One, you can't game the system, right? You get the money, whoever you are. Even Martin Sorrell would be paid that money every year if he was resident in the UK. Now, the reason that appeals is that what right-wing people often don't like about welfare isn't... Right-wing people actually aren't worse at giving to charity than left-wing people. If anything, they're a bit better, OK? So it's not that they don't dislike... What they really hate, probably, is people exaggerating their own misfortunes to gain the system. Or what they might hate about welfare is they see it as one political party bribing its supporters at the expense of people who don't vote for it. So that's sort of robbing Peter to pay Paul. If you have a guaranteed universal basic income, what's quite weird about it is a lot of libertarians and a lot of conservatives go... <coughs> <coughs> I'm sorry, I've got a... that seems pretty fair. So once you stop listening to people's stated reasons and start going, I wonder what the deep reason is here that they're not talking about. And the reason they're not talking about it is that it's conveyed to them by an emotion. And emotions don't come with reasons attached. Your revulsion to poo doesn't come with poo is horrible because it contains germs. It just comes as ugh, okay? Now what I find interesting about this is one problem I think I solved with the help of KFC McDonald's and Ebbsfleet Station. Now, you may be younger, you may not mind yourself. A lot of people really hate going through airport security. Okay? Now, you know, it's, first of all, I wouldn't want to board a plane without some security. I wouldn't want to go on a plane where anybody can just rock up, you know, <laughs> with you know, like joke bags in the shape of a bomb and shit like that. <laughs> I, don't want, I don't want to travel on that. I don't want to go on that plane. You know, we need airport security, but people really dislike it. And if you ask them, why do you dislike it? Again, you get that same thing with the Waterstones customers. Ooh, it's like, 